Welcome to the Red Med Podcast, Rescue, Expedition and Disaster Medicine, where we provide a platform for healthcare professionals working in or aspiring to join rescue, expedition and disaster response teams, a platform to share information, advice and opportunities and connect like-minded Red Med individuals in our community. Good morning and welcome to episode 15 of the Red Med Podcast, Rescue, Expedition and Disaster Medicine. As usual, I'm joined by the SOS crew chief, Chris Sharp. Good morning, sir. Good morning. As usual, the podcast is supported by SOS Coffee, coffee which we sell to fund medical missions for underserved communities in Guatemala and to run free CPR and bleeding control courses to save lives across the country. We're very proud to announce today that this podcast is now sponsored by Life Systems. Life Systems, whose mantra is freedom to go further. They provide high-quality first aid kits, expedition and mountain first aid kits, mountain safety and survival gear, and uh, high-quality travel products. We've used their products all over the world on expeditions, mountain expeditions, desert expeditions, SAR operations, everything from their Bothy bag to their mosquito nets, sunscreen, insect repellent, high-quality Mountain Leader Pro first aid kits, Extremely well designed, extremely high quality, perfect for the needs of the Red Med community. We'll be testing some of their other products over the next couple of weeks and we'll be supplying them for our Red Med course in April. So we we'll look forward to some gear reviews on the Facebook and the Instagram. And then if you come out of the Red Med course, you'll be issued with some of their equipment and it'll be for sale on site as well. So, what are we going to talk about today? We thought, given that the Red Med course, the pilot course, or the first course, is approaching us very, very quickly, we're into 2019 already, first course, Rescue Expedition and Disaster Medicine, is going to be from the 6th to the 13th of April this year, a couple of months away, so we thought we'd just amplify what the course is about, what the background is, why we designed it, who it's for, and what the benefits are. So let's go into it then. The course was originally designed on the back of our experience in rescue, expedition and disaster medicine environments. Working with other healthcare professionals, we've worked with expedition doctors, flight nurses, close protection team medics who have been absolutely incredible in a whole host of environments. They can improvise They're robust, they can adapt to change, critically think under pressure. But not all healthcare professionals have got that experience out in the field. So the idea was to provide a robust and comprehensive continuing medical education course, providing a blend of classes, on-site skill stations, scenario-based learning, adventure travel, to give you that depth of knowledge and experience to integrate as a healthcare professional into a rescue expedition or disaster medicine team. Um, The course itself includes personal safety equipment. Upon arrival, it'll be issued with uh, PPE that you can use throughout the course and in your future career for that type of environment. The course culminates in the award of a certificate from us, but also if you sign up for the, the Wilderness Medical Society Fellowship Scheme, the course will offer up to 40 credits for the fellowship scheme. Now, everybody will be different. It depends how many credits you've already got on other courses towards that scheme. You can't claim duplicate points for the same core credits, so it may be that you get the full 40 credits initially if you've just started the project, or perhaps if you're already on the pathway, you might only get 10, 20 credits. But it's still a huge chunk towards that journey of earning the, uh, the postgraduate qualification of Fellow of the Academy of Wilderness Medicine. We're also working in partnership with NASA, the National Association of Search and Rescue in the US, and all students will be automatically registered as an individual member with NASA. 
as part of the course, aside from the Red Med Manual, you will also get the Introduction to Search and Rescue Operations Manual. And at the end of the course, or a time of your choosing, you'll be able to go forward and take the online SAR 3 exam, which will give you another qualification in that particular environment. Awesome. So what does it include? Fun. Fun. <laughs> it's, it's an adventure holiday. For if medics. You, if you're like-minded... <laughs> If you're from the adventure travel, adventure medicine background, you, you will absolutely love it. You come into Guatemala to our playground and you'll be bouncing between fast flowing rivers, jungles, mountains, helicopters, doing some real world medicine, remote medical clinics in the jungle and just having fun whilst learning a little bit. Awesome. <laughs> so the course in general includes all the fine detail that you don't generally learn on clinical courses. All the stuff that we normally learn from experience, we trip ourselves up, we think, oh, I should have known that, I'll be better next time. Generally, the planning side, so it's going to cover operational planning, development of medical emergency response plans, communications, things like the in-reach, GPSs, satellite communications, how they work, which ones work in certain regions of the world, how to use them. Water treatment, water sourcing and treatment, whether it be on a small-scale individual or treating 30,000 litre containers on an oil rig in the middle of the desert. Survival training, we'll actually go to the jungle and, and run a jungle survival camp where you'll be constructing shelters, putting up hammocks, sourcing your water, food, etc. Search and rescue essentials, aircraft safety, active shooter incidents, incident command system and triage, risk assessments, you guys will be preparing and conducting your own risk assessments for various types of operations from jungle expeditions to mountain search and rescue. We'll discuss insurance, the requirements, deploying as an expedition medic, equipment considerations and preparation, what you need for different environments, what the cross-border considerations and paperwork are. Venomous snakes, spiders and scorpions, and we'll have live venomous snakes, spiders and scorpions in the classroom just to put things in context um, under the control and guise of a, a herpetologist, I might add. He will control them all. <clears throat> but we'll also talk about anti-venom, what to use, when to use, the, the benefits, pros and cons. Improvisation, field dentistry. We'll get our local dentist to come in and give the non-dentists some idea of how to manage abscesses or avulsions or problems with teeth. Patient assessment. We'll do some whitewater rafting. That'll take us through the jungle. As we're going through the jungle, we'll talk about whitewater rescue, some of the different techniques you can use. And then at the end of that day, we'll arrive in a remote community that probably hasn't seen a doctor in years. And then the core students will set up a remote medical clinic and we'll assess and treat some of the local community. So there'll be some cultural issues to consider there, some language barriers... Uh, we'll probably see a whole host of things from rashes, spider bites, serious infections, hyperglycemia, cardiac issues that have been undiagnosed for decades. You'll see a whole host of things and get some great experience whilst investing back into the community and helping people. What else? Jungle camps, volcano treks. We're going to trek up the side of a live volcano not the one that erupted recently, um, <laughs> it's far safer than that. But we'll do a search and rescue operation on the flanks of the volcano where students will be involved in the preparation, the planning, the deployment, the search patterns, identification and assessment of the victims, triage, calling in a helicopter and then you'll be required to short haul evacuate the patient off the flank of the volcano. So students will be strapped to the Bowman bag dangle below a helicopter and controlling Marshall and the helicopter under our safety supervision to get off the, off the mountain. So we'll also cover patient packaging, prolonged field care on the mountain, in the jungle, <clears throat> discuss some real-world rescue expedition and disaster medicine cases in context, wound management in the wilderness environment, helicopter marshalling, short-haul extraction, Altitude illness, cold injuries, immersion, vector-borne diseases, all of which we're going to talk about in context. So we're going to talk about 
snakes, spiders and scorpions, aside from the classroom, out in the jungle, talk about altitude illness on the mountain at 2,300 metres, talk about immersion while we're in the river. Oh yes. As per usual. So a whole host of real world skills and information in context. What do you need to come on the course? You need to be an existing healthcare professional, whether it be an EMT, nurse, paramedic, physician's assistant, doctor. Um, you need to have a good background in, in medicine, in your core qualification. You don't necessarily need to have wilderness experience or travel experience. It helps, but the whole idea of this course is to teach you how to live in these environments, what equipment you'll need, and we'll send out a comprehensive gear list as well to guide you in the preparation. So some of the key highlights then, um, it's not all classroom based. There is an intensive classroom period to give you the foundations, but uh, we're gonna cover a jungle survival camp. We'll be out in deep primary jungle for 36 hours. We'll talk about river crossings, construction of shelters, hammocks, fires. Fire. There's still jaguars down there. One of the few places in Central America where there are. We're going to talk about food preparation in that environment. And because it's deep primary jungle with deep canopy or dense canopy, even the satellite communications struggle to work around there. So you might find yourself in a prolonged field care environment. We'll discuss some of the considerations looking after patients, how to create improvised helicopter landing points, etc. We will plan, execute a mountain search and rescue operation involving real helicopters, simulated patients, etc. And obviously, as I mentioned, the whitewater rafting with the, the corporate social responsibility element, giving back to the community uh, and helping an underserved community. It's just about to hammer it down. So let's see if the, uh, the MacBook Pro's waterproof. If not, we'll have to get a rubberized one for next time. So that's essentially the, the course content. You guys will arrive in Guatemala We'll pick you up from the airport, take you to a nice hotel and then ferry you back and forth between the hotel and our training site in the capital city every day, providing appropriate security. Uh, we've lived here 10 years, never had any problems. Beautiful place. It's normally 23 degrees all year round, apart from today where it's about 12 degrees. And I'm raining. <laughs> we're sat here with our fleeces on. Uh, but then we'll organise the logistics, take you out to these remote locations, Everywhere we go, we'll have a safety brief. We'll have the relevant um, medical emergency response plan in the background. You'll be supported by SOS medical services, so there'll be ground and air ambulance support for any med real-world medical evacuations. So you'll have adequate support. You'll be accompanied by us, Chris and Chris, as the instructors, and hopefully we'll either have Dr Gustavo Flores or Ben Mattingly as our faculty. They will... Uh, both incredibly experienced emergency medicine physicians in disaster medicine, wilderness medicine. One of them is a fellow of the Academy of Wilderness Medicine too. So we're going to have an incredible depth of knowledge on the course for you guys to tap into and, and just learn as much as possible. But going back to why we developed this, we've all worked in different environments. I've been on the side of a mountain at 23,000 metres, 23,000 feet with doctors, paramedics and nurses who have got an incredible wealth of knowledge but in the first few days of that expedition were struggling to be comfortable in that environment didn't know how to look after their feet didn't know how to pack their rucksack I've worked with guys in Iraq who've literally come straight from the ambulance service in a, an urban environment don't know how to use satellite phones don't know how to navigate don't know how to use GPSs weren't accustomed to being alone and having to direct, plan and execute a medical emergency response plan themselves, normally everything's done for them. Having to improvise, having to come out of the comfort zone and use what resources are available to them in country and not what they're accustomed to in their protocols back in, in the city environment. But I think to put it in a real context, you've got a bit of an anecdote from a flight we did the other day, right? Yeah, Friday and we'll probably do a podcast specifically on this. We did task for a rescue out in Atitlan next to the lake. I went because it was 
all intents and purposes, a really simple job. It was just to collect a tourist with... She'd fractured tib and fib. She'd already had a cast on. It was just to fetch her to the city because that's what her country's insurance paid for. Uh, a simple job. So I went because we've got a new guy who's on probation. And it was kind of a... This would be a nice bit of an intro for him. Uh, he's 15 years, 16 years critical care nurse. We l- we flew there by helicopter, 35, 40 minutes, landing next to the lake, extremely tight landing s- zone, which involved me hanging out quite a bit. Uh, but then we ran into problems. We were accused of landing on private property, all these kind of things. Uh, so we had to get rid of the helicopter. I ended up getting a boat to transfer the patient back to the helicopter, which... I've got the knowledge and experience and comfort level to do that because my priority is we were in aeromedical evacuation. If the helicopter's now impounded, we can't do that. Whereas the probation guy, fantastic clinical interventions, all that kind of thing, but now in a state of shock because I've just sent the helicopter away. I'm talking about boats, carrying people by stretches through little villages. It was just... Totally out of his comfort zone. Once doing the medical stuff, he was fine, but it was getting there and getting back. So this is why the kind of the course is remember what the mission is and how we achieve the mission. And the aim is to try and give you some skills and exposure and all this kind of thing to... We're paid to do the... Evacuation, but if we've got no helicopter, we can't do our job, and the patient's going to suffer, all that kind of thing. Uh, I think that was key, wasn't it? He's in, on the flight. You were there as an instructor, providing the oversight for this guy's probation period, probation for the flight environment, because he's an experienced critical care nurse with decades of experience, fantastic paediatric neonatal nurse and great for critical care, planned critical care flights. But when he found himself out of his comfort zone, in a remote area, which wasn't planned for, there was the added pressure from the authorities claiming that we weren't allowed to land at that particular area because they'd just resurfaced the football pitch, incredibly, and then completely taking him out of his normal train of thought. He wasn't in an ambulance, wasn't in a hospital, wasn't in a an air ambulance, you had to borrow a boat, you had to commandeer (laughs) a boat and sail across the lake to the next available helicopter landing point and strap the patient to the roof of this boat and consider the environmental impact of not only the boat but also the the heat and the the sun bouncing off the, the surface. He was just completely, it was wilderness medicine, it was improvisation, very, very different. And plus you've got the the added stress of... Uh, you're wanting to know, because everybody knows there was a problem with the helicopter and the police and the locals, so I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to the helicopter place, we're speaking to our ops room, speaking to the client's insurance company on the other side of the planet whilst trying to manage a patient, a helicopter, in a location. Lots and lots of moving parts at yeah. the same time. So it was fun. I it, loved it. It was fantastic. It was... <laughs> It was problem solving, critical thinking, outside the box, under pressure, bit of wilderness medicine, bit of logistics, medical emergency response plans, helicopter safety, all of the stuff we do on the Red Med course, all of the stuff they don't teach you on basic EMT courses and, and nursing courses. Uh, but it just put it into context, really, isn't it? So hopefully he's going to be better prepared in the future and we're going to thrash that out and do a good debrief on Wednesday night. We'll do a doctor house of the clinical side. Um, that's key as well your options to get to the the secondary HLS or HLP were tuk tuk, little ground taxi or boat and the reason you chose the boat was because bouncing around, aside from the fact that your patient with a cast on, a full length cast on the leg wouldn't have fit in the tuk tuk bouncing around those roads with potholes the size of the tyres 
wouldn't have done the fracture any good or the pain management. And there's also the security implications of the upset community. The upset community, and now we're escaping. Whereas with the boat, they didn't know we'd gone. <laughs> yeah. So that's another podcast. <laughs> that's a whole new story. That's a book. <laughs> so that that's the Red Med course in a nutshell. It's uh, first course is in as I mentioned, the 6th to the 13th of April. If you're interested, hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or the website. The, the best point of contact for us is the Facebook, at Red Med Men. It's Rescue Expedition Disaster Medicine, or at Red Med Men on Facebook. You can also contact us through Facebook, at SOS Med Training. We're in collaboration with SOS Medical Services, we offer other courses such as the emergency medical technician and the combined hybrid EMT and wilderness EMT course plus the remote paramedic course, both of which incorporate clinical placements. We also offer standalone clinical placements for healthcare professionals, EMTs, paramedics, offshore medics, <coughs> excuse me, including ground ambulance, emergency ambulance attachments, critical care transport ambulances, GP clinics and remote clinics in uh, in jungle locations in underserved communities. All of our clinical placements, students are integrated into SOS Medical Services, into the company. So you benefit from the medical director, you get a uniform, you're covered by our medical liability insurance, we've got on, on-site protocols, all the equipment you need. As Chris mentioned before, you're not just a bystander, you're not just an observer. If you want to come down, dust off your, dust off the rust off your skills, practice some interventions, get some more patient contact, or just experience emergency pre-hospital medicine in a different context, in a different environment, you can come down and you can get real hands-on skills. If you want to do ultrasound, you want to do fast scans, ECGs, cannulation, medical, medication administration, there's minor surgical interventions, airway management, whatever you need to do, you're protected and supported by the organisation um, and you can come down and practice. Unlike when I did my attachment for the HSE offshore medic course, I think I just took blood pressures and did ECGs, which are all, all good skills. You, the more you do, the better you get. But because I wasn't covered under the NHS insurance, I was literally just stood in the corner in the emergency room and I wasn't able to interact or perform any in interventions. So there really wasn't a great deal of value in that. But if you need the value, if you need the hours, if you need to top up your skill set, get in touch with us and uh, and we'll talk about it. Anything else you want to add, Chris? Uh, no, just come on out here, have fun, uh, and hopefully see you all on the red course, dangling underneath the helicopter. <laughs> Fantastic. OK, guys, hit us up on social media. Give us a shout if you've got any questions about the course or, or you want to ask anything uh, about the Red Med environment. We'll post it up on Facebook and Instagram and, uh, and get back to you as soon as possible. Stay safe and have a good day.